the last time that you felt your heartbeat? I mean, not just like put your finger on your wrist and check for a pulse, but actually really truly felt your heartbeat and felt life and happiness and joy. Can't wait to get up in the morning, running on the beach barefooted, happy as a lark, little girl exploding from inside of you. When is the last time you felt that? I remember the first time that I noticed that it was missing. The first time I noticed that it went missing was after my second divorce. I was in so much pain. My heart was broken. Physically, I was in pain. Mentally, emotionally, spiritually, I was completely drained. I had nothing left inside. My children were gone. For the night and I wanted to be able to feel no pain just for a minute just to rest I'd been crying for months and I was home alone I missed my kids and I just wanted not to feel pain so I took some Ambien and then I didn't want to feel the physical pain so I took some Lortab it wasn't until the next morning when I woke up and realized that I had been sick by the bed that there could that could have been a problem it probably wasn't the smartest thing to do so as I'm cleaning up the sick by the bed I hear my kids coming in the front door mom mom and that's when it hit me all of the sudden I could have accidentally killed myself and my children could have come home and found me They never would have known that I did not have any intention of leaving them. That was the day I felt my heart beat had stopped. I knew that something in me had died. And it's also the same day that I used the defibrillators to restart my heart. As I was sitting on the couch with my kids that night hugging them and holding them and realizing that here I am, a single mom with five children, no income, no job, nothing. That even though I had nothing, I had the world in my arms, I had my children. And I knew that I had to figure things out. What was I going to do? And I realized at that moment as well, not only had my heart started beating again, But I didn't know what I wanted to do with it because I didn't know who I was. I had spent so many years becoming what I had been told I should be or what I thought everyone wanted me to be. I had, I was doing things simply for the purpose of what I thought others expected from me. I had even started saying things that I would not normally say, but saying them after hearing someone else say it because I wanted to be accepted. I became someone I didn't even recognize. So that day was about six years ago now. And that's when I realized I had to make some changes. And I have been making changes over the last six years. One of the big changes I made is that I've become an entrepreneur. I loved being a real estate virtual assistant. I loved working with my agents and helping them succeed and giving them more time with their families. I loved it. And that quickly turned into my being able to coach virtual assistants all over the world on how to start and grow their own virtual assistant businesses. That was incredibly satisfying to me. As I moved through my career, I became a digital marketer and I built websites and did branding and I do sales funnels. I love, love, love digital marketing. And yet I was still unfulfilled on some level as I was building this. I mean, I was helping my clients you know, increase their sales by hundreds and hundreds of percentages by helping them with their branding and sales funnels. I was making a difference in hundreds of virtual assistants' lives by helping them build their businesses. I was helping health, life, and fitness coaches co- coaches build incredible businesses that were making a ton of money. And I was watching my virtual assistants actually far out see, exceed anything that I had ever accomplished in my life. I was listening to a Tony Robbins lesson Uh, or a talk one time, and I heard him say something about what you would do when you retire. Have you built a business that you can sell? Have you built a business that you can retire from? 
I quickly realized that I had built a business where I was working 20 hour days, six days a week. And it had become something that I loved, but it had become something that I didn't recognize. It wasn't what I really wanted to do with my life. And that's why I started Yes Women's Network. Yes Women's Network is, an, is a network of women globally, and we help women who are in distress of, of any kind. We have four pillars that we help in, and one of my very favorites is that we have a scholarship program. Now, six years after I have jump-started my heartbeat again, I have found my passion and what I love doing. I want you to do the same thing. So you're going to do these three steps to finding who you are and really getting to the point where you can get up every morning just incredibly excited about life and incredibly excited about your business, okay? All right, if you're ready to write this down, the first one is you. You need to remember who you are. You need to find your heartbeat again. Why do you want to get up every morning? Are you serving your purpose? Are you the very best that you can be physically, mentally, spiritually, on all levels of life? Are you succeeding as you or have you lost yourself? If you've lost yourself, it's time to find yourself because when you are the best you that you can be, when you discover you, you can do all of the other things that you want to do and you will be incredibly successful at it much more successful than when you aren't sure who you are. So that's number one is you. Number two is that you need to get excited. Many years when I was in corporate, I would get up in the morning and try and think of a reason why I didn't, couldn't go to work. Or I would be driving to work with just like the saddest face. I did not want to go to work because it was so difficult. I wake up every single morning excited about my life because I have created a life of purpose I know who I am. I know exactly what I want to do. I'm surrounded by an amazing family who is incredibly supportive and I have fantastic friends and I have friends all over the world. So you need to get excited about that because I can tell you now that I have that, I've been able to kick anxiety and kick my depression in the face and get rid of a lot of other problems that I had. So by getting excited about doing all the things I want to do, you can do the same thing. Believe me, if I can do it, you can too. So you need to get excited. And the third step is to start right now. Don't put it off. Don't put anything off. If painting your nails in the morning makes you feel fabulous, do that. That's starting. That's one step. You need to put your, you know, if you're a stay-at-home mom, you put on your mascara. Do that before, you know, after you put your little baby to bed. Go put on some mascara before you do the dishes. You're going to feel fabulous while you're doing the dishes. If you're an entrepreneur, do one thing today that will build your business, not just the people that you're helping. Do not stop, okay? You need to start and continue moving forward. Start by doing one little thing at a time. Do you know the average woman only spends 17 minutes a day on herself? And of that survey, 50% of the women who saw that 17 minutes said, "Uh, no, I don't spend 17 minutes. So it's probably a lot smaller. So you need to start by spending more time on yourself and start by spending time on your business and start by making sure that you're doing what you want to do. Okay, guess what that spells? Yes, Y-E-S, three steps. You get excited and start now to discover you and live your life and become the very best that you can be so that you can have the amazing relationships, you can change lives, including your own, You can affect change. You can make more sales in your business. You can be more successful. You can make more money. All of those things will happen if you can discover who you are, get excited, and start. It really is that simple. Now, if you'd asked me this five years ago, I wouldn't have believed it. But because I've done it, not only have I done it, I've helped hundreds of women do it as well. I know it's true. It's going to be a little bit tricky. So you might want to start out by writing your I am statement. The first thing you do is get out a piece of paper and write I am. And then you make a list of all of the things that you are. And then you're actually going to take that first paper and you're going to wad it up and you're going to throw it away. Because chances are you wrote down a bunch of labels of things that you are. 
Like you are a mom, you are a wife, you are a sister, you are a daughter, you are a chauffeur, you are a chef, you are a real estate agent, you are an entrepreneur, whatever those things are. Those are all great and important and those are amazing. And guess what? You've got those nailed down. You're doing an excellent job at those. But the next paper, I want you to consult that little girl inside. Consult with her and ask her what you truly are. Because I bet you'll find words like kind and loving, compassionate, passionate, beautiful, outstanding, unlimited, and so many more. So go out there, remember who you are, get excited, and just start. You can do it. Just start. Head on over to Yes Women's Network and tell me about it. I would love to hear about who you are. Bye.